So I said I would be back with a full length video uh, and here it is. Now, I normally do a podcast, uh, Neil Malone's Wrestling and Life Podcast, and it's normally up on podomatic.com and on iTunes. Uh, I thought, you know, for just doing it differently, uh, just for this week, I'll probably take the audio from this and put it up as the podcast, but I thought I would do kind of a video version of the podcast, normally talking about uh, whatever subjects are going on in professional wrestling. I can only really put up a f- keep a few episodes up at a time, unfortunately, due to the podomatic thing. I, I've not got the money. I'm not really willing to pay all that money to, to keep all the episodes uh, up there, so I might look to, to see um, whether there's another... Uh, thing like SoundCloud or something like that, where I could put a keep a, a decent archive of the f- uh, the episodes. Uh, but today I want to talk about the WWE 2K16 video game. I want to talk, obviously cover Night of Champions and that five star wrestling event, which is happening also this Sunday, featuring John Morrison, Ricochet, Joe Coffey, Party, uh, the villain Marty Scurll, ODB, and other great names. Uh, including Viper A is going to be a great event, so I'll uh, I'll talk about that at the end of uh, the show. Firstly, though, uh, quick recap for those who have not uh, maybe watched that other my other video I put up very quickly last night. Uh, the news that Juventud Guerrera is no longer coming to the UK. Now, this was a result of the uh, Scottish Wrestling. I know this because Scottish Wrestling Entertainment um, put up. Uh, a, what, what do you call it? A, a press release statement um, on their official Facebook page last night around about 8 p.m. Uh, saying that, well, it's really, it looks like a few other promotions who were all booked, it looks like a group effort bringing Juventud Guerrero over. A couple of the, the uh, promotions have pulled out, which means it's impossible for SWE and IPW to bring Juventud Guerrero over to the UK. Now, Obviously, it's entirely up to individual companies to make a statement regarding their shows, any shows that he was booked on. I did, I do know that searching for, through social media, uh, Hubie's booked on shows right up like, to the end of October in the UK. Uh, I saw one was October 25th. I don't know exactly what period this Hubie to Guerrero not coming over to the UK covers. Uh, I don't. I don't know whether he was going to be staying in, in the UK for an entire month, uh, whether he was going to come over for a few appearances, return home, wherever that is, Mexico, America, wherever it is he actually resides these days, and then return to, for shows at the end of October. I don't know what the, the situation is. Um, so it's obviously up to you know, check your, your, each individual company that you attend your, your local company or any company that you book tickets for that Juventud Guerrero is or was scheduled to appear on. I don't know the full story of what, how exactly his bookings work. I, I'm not involved obviously in that or, or any company's bookings. Um, so it's a real pity Juventud was booked to come over to Scotland earlier this year in May. That event didn't happen because of problems uh, within the venue, and yet again, unfortunately, uh, you know, it seems Human to Guerrero, SW, and IPW are kind of victims of other promotions pulling out, meaning they can't bring them over. It's a real pity uh, to hear this news. You know, Human to Guerrero, second generation uh, Mexican wrestler, a huge name still in the world of Lucha Libre, um, still doing well on the independent scene. So like I said, check your local companies, any company you book tickets for that Human Dude Guerrero is or was scheduled to appear on. I don't know how it affects his bookings in the UK. It's a real pity. Hopefully, uh, SW did say that they'll uh, try and t- they'll be taking steps to try and remedy it and uh, make announcements when they can. And also they said a video from Hubie uh, would be uh, hopefully appearing soon. So. I do hope that, fingers crossed, I get the chance to meet Juventud Guerrero. Second time this year, it's unfortunately 
uh, not happened, uh, he's not appeared on the show. Uh, very much pity. One of the guys that I've followed for many years, uh, since he's like ECW, and then he went to WCW, and then WWE, and uh, I've kind of tr- said before, try and follow some of the international wrestling scenes, particularly in the likes of Mexico, uh, where he's a huge name still. So it's a real great pity that Juventud Guerrero will not be coming over to the UK again. Check with various companies uh, individually. I don't know how it affected bookings, and uh, like I said, some of the wrestlers, they come over to the UK to work a few dates to go home. But then again, you get guys like Colt Cabana, who did the Edinburgh Fringe Festival this year. Um, and, you know, he came over and he stayed in Edinburgh the whole month and did various shows for ICW, Scottish Wrestling Entertainment. Uh, he was part of the Hell for Lycra 12 event. I know SW's Uprising Nation, uh, which happens a week on Saturday, will still be going ahead. Uh, they haven't said it's cancelled, I don't think they would cancel the event. Some great matches, I'm sure, um, scheduled for that. I know J.D. Wilde uh, is scheduled to take on the SW Future Division champion, Little Johnny Trouble, LJT, who was also uh, scheduled to defend his newly won Scottish Wrestling Entertainment Heavyweight Championship for the first time against Humantud Guerrero. That would have been a fantastic match. And it was Brian Kendrick that LJT took on last year, last October, and what was an exceptional match, LGT winning uh, the SWE Heavyweight Championship in August or August 29th at Hell for Lycra 12 against the former champion uh, global hero Joe Henry. So it would have been a great, great match. Really unfortunate news that uh, Hubie's not coming over again. Check out the individual companies you may have booked tickets for that he's scheduled or was scheduled to appear on. I don't have that information. I also, I'm not involved in any company. So it's a real pity, but fingers crossed we will get, I will get to see Hubie did get out alive and get to meet him, hopefully. Um, prob- I don't know, hopefully soon, probably next year now, but uh, hopefully at one point I will get the chance to finally meet the Juice. Now I also want to talk about, before I go into W2K16 and uh, talk about uh, the Night of Champions uh, and then run down the five star wrestling event featuring John Morrison and Ricochet and ODB and Viper and uh, the villain Marty Scurll, um which will be a great, uh, great event this Sunday in Edinburgh. I want to talk actually about the latest edition of FSM Magazine, Fighting Spirit Magazine. It's a pro wrestling magazine this month, it's uh, issue 123 or 123, uh, which is obviously quite appropriate for a wrestling magazine. Uh, A bit of a Scottish flavour to the magazine this uh, this issue. Uh, There's an exclusive interview with Sting, uh, who's coming over, I've said it many times on the podcast, keep covering it on uh, here on YouTube, he's coming over for a mini UK tour. Uh, I'll just double check the dates, uh, because it's got the dates right here. October the 5th, Lyric Theatre in London, October the 6th, Comedy Store in Manchester, and the one that I am going to be attending, October the 7th, at the Garage in Glasgow. Uh, so that's going to be a great, uh, look, really looking forward to meeting Sting in person, I've said it many times. Uh, it's a interview with him, I'll look back at the round year on Piper, obviously the first edition since his passing on July 31st. Um, I say it's a Scottish, uh, bit of a Scottish theme to it, because the one to watch uh, is actually a great Scottish uh, guy to watch. I mean, there is some guys, I'll try to actually find the picture, because um, of my um, thing, if I can, I mean, also there's a three month, uh, kind of a, a selection of three month diaries from Nicky Storm. Uh, who stayed for three months in Japan, also rumoured to about the WWE tryout. Um, there is uh, rumours that she might sign with WWE as, as yet unfound, unfounded. Um, but I'll try just try to find this um, section here. Um, but there's, there's even I uh, look at yeah look at P- Pro Wrestling Elite uh, Anniversary Show. There's a double uh, a, a double page look at ICW's Wayne Stock and the one to watch it is Kenny Williams, uh, one of the hottest young stars in Scottish wrestling right now. Uh, he's really popular, one uh, wrestler like many Scottish talent do, wrestles for various promotions, uh, mostly known for his tough and insane championship wrestling, the Glasgow based promotion that will feature Rhino and hardcore legend Mick Foley 
on their Fear and Loathing 8 event uh, on November the uh, 15th. Now, uh, it, obviously it's a good magazine. Uh, I get it every month. Just now I'm having to order it kind of month by month if I've got the money um, because the local shop that used to sell W. E. Smith just shut their... Um, they actually shut their big store uh, in the city centre of Dundee um, a few weeks ago. Uh, so uh, kind of, if I have the money, I'm going kind to of be on it month by month. I haven't got the money. All I want to, to do is to, to actually subscribe to it right now. Um, but so it's a good um, good magazine. Um, I think it's, it's, a, it's a good read. There's, I know that they've sold out of it online, but it's still available in W. Smith stores and Easton stores, I think, is, or Gleason stores. Um, so it's a real good magazine if anybody wants to check out, but uh, there's certainly a good interview with Sting, look back at the career and life of Rowdy Roddy Piper, and also uh, the last bit of the uh, Scottish flavour to it, there's an interview also with the WWE Hall of Famer, the million dollar man Ted DiBiase, who is actually the owner of Scottish Wrestling Entertainment right now, uh, and he'll be making his way to Scotland and to Dundee in November. Uh, so it's quite Scottish themed if you look at it um, this month. A uh, good, real good interview with Sting. I'm still trying to figure out a question to ask Sting uh, when he comes over. There's so many things and I'm sure he's going to be asked so much stuff uh, during the, the first two days of the tour. Um, so it's a little bit difficult to try and figure out what question could I ask him. Um, but I'm sure that'll be great. Uh, so it's a good magazine if you want to check it out. Uh, I said FSM, uh, I said Demi Smith. Uh, whether it's in Easton's or Gleason's or something, uh, check out good, all your good, uh, decent uh, and sometimes horrible uh, magazine stores and you might find it there. So also I want to cover uh, WWE 2K16, I know this kind of seems a little bit leaping and about uh, on the, on this uh, video, but uh, it's quite a few. Uh, I really want to run down properly uh, Night of Champions. So, uh, WWE 2K16, first of all, though, uh, keep, to keep this going, the entire roster has been, at least like, seems like the finalised roster has been revealed. Instead of revealing all at once, IGN.com has been revealing it for the past about, I think it's five or six weeks. They've been uh, revealing uh, a set of names every week. I won't run down the entire list because a lot of people will know and it'll take quite a while to get through the 120 plus uh, names that are actually a part of the roster. There's obviously the the expected ones, the Dolph Ziggler's, the Bray Wyatt's, Luke Harper, Mark Henry, uh, Seth Rollins, uh, obviously Stone Cold Steve Austin is part of uh, the, main, uh, the, you know, the main gameplay. Uh, and it, you know, talking of the, playing through the main gameplay, the Steve Austin, I've s obviously looked at some screenshots of uh, the Austin mode on the on the WWE 2K16 video game, and I did notice a couple of things. First of all, there's two versions of Steve Austin: the Stone Cold Steve Austin, and there's a stunning Steve Austin version as well. But I did notice that one screenshot had him. In ECW, though it didn't show that it didn't show the ring properly, but it does bring to the question: Is there an ECW ring available to use in the game? Because it had as the screenshot I saw with was Austin with the kind of long blonde hair that was starting to kind of a little bit fall out at that point. Uh, he was wearing an orange top uh, and I think it's black tracksuit bottoms. Uh, it seemed, it looked from the from the arena, that a little bit of the arena you could see, it looked like certainly it was an ECW bit. Plus that with the inclusion, and that's and one of, that's one of the, the real surprising names in the game, is former ECW star Mikey Whipwreck. Uh, he had a short run in WCW, you can see, I think, his best out, and I think it's against um, Billy Kidman at Uncensored 1999. I think they're the opening match. It's a decent match. Uh, actually, Uncensored 1999 is one of my favourite WCW uh, uh, events of the later years of the company. And Mikey Whitbrick is in the game. So, it 
you know, Mikey Whipwreck took on to you on the Mikey Whipwreck was, uh, I think, the ECW champion at that point, but they certainly had a feud in the original ECW, the Paul Heyman true version of Extreme Championship Wrestling, and although it's not being covered, it does look like there's a possibility of an ECW ring in there. Plus, also, the other screenshot I saw of stunning Steve Austin, uh, there he had the short uh, blonde hair, but this is actually it's quite ironic because he kind of let his hair grow out before he he went to ECW. It was already kind of balding, but and I, that's the question. That would be a good question. Uh, you know, if he did let it grow, how long would it grow? Still, I think he tweeted us that before on his podcast, and I don't think it grows that well these days. But um, he let kind of a, almost like a Hulk Hogan look uh, when he arrived in ECW, which is kind of why he did the Steve Maniac deal, the Steve Steve Maniac pro. It's on his, a couple of these DVDs. Uh, but I saw a screenshot of stunning Steve Austin dressed in his Hollywood Blondes outfit, a silver kind of vest with a red, I think it was dark red star, and you know, th- that's obviously when he was a tag teaming with Brian, with Brian, Brian Pillman, who is also in the game, which is great, but unfortunately it looks like Brian Pillman is in his 96-97 uh, uh, outfit in WWE with the long trousers instead of uh, the, the hope you possibly uh, I would kind of really hope that we'd we'd get uh, another outfit for Flyer Brian that he would be dressed the same as stunning Steve Austin so we'd have the Hollywood Blondes dressed as a tag team which was one of the they were generally a great team in WCW uh, in the early 1990s they were a fantastic tag team they had a lot of talent. Like Steve Austin has said many times, they were just thrown together. Austin thought he was going to go down the US champion route with Harley Race as manager, but then he was thrown into a tag team with Brian Pillman. But it came together and it worked. And I remember seeing uh, quite a decent amount of their matches on WCW television in those days, and they really did really they did brilliantly as a tag team. And I know a lot of a lot of fun the WWE. Uh, great, you know, that's the great advantage on, on looking back at these kind of eras. A lot of the stuff is on the WWE Network and it's on DVDs and so forth that fans can actually, uh, you know, not think, well, you know, Steve Austin and Brian Pillman as the Hollywood Blondes, how good were they? You can actually go back a little bit and look uh, at uh, some of their matches in WCW. And they were a great tag team. Uh, so, hope, I would hope that we would get an alternative outfit for Brian Pullman that would be the dress the same so that Hollywood Blondes could be reunited finally in a WWE video game. I don't, uh, also we don't know that uh, that is guaranteed, but there are a few names that I would not have thought would be in the game. Kama Mustafa of the Nation of Domination, formerly also, uh, also known as Papa Shango, also known as the Godfather. He actually switches between his uh, gimmicks or characters, whatever you want to call them, uh, during appearances on the wrestling circuit now, all these wrestling conventions, he actually switches between them. Uh, you know, you could hire Papa Shango, or if you want Kama Mustafa, or if you want The Godfather, he switches between them, uh, which is also a great thing for him to be able to do. Um, the Honky Tonk Man is in there, Ken Shamrock is in there, um, where else is it? There's obviously Three Faces of Foley, Cat Jack, Dude Love, and Mankind. Uh, where else? There's Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. There's Ravishing Rick Rude. I always hated Rick Rude as a uh, when I was younger, but in the WCW, mostly the WCW that I really was exposed to Ravishing Rick Rude in the sense of watching him on television for a decent period of time. I saw him on WWE, uh, on WWE, uh, or WWF you know, videotapes and some program they got from friends, but I didn't really get to see him week to week until he went to, until he spent a decent time in WCW, and I really, he was one of the heels I really, really, really hated. Uh, Jim the Anvil Knight had said a lot of the, uh, so pretty much most of the, the Heart Foundation, apart from Own Heart. Uh, well, so there's another name that I uh, saw, Jake the Snake Roberts is in the game, there was another one of uh, kind of weird names that I uh, saw. Vader's in it. Uh, can't quite see it on this list. There's a quick thing through the list uh, to see where the other weird name was that I was going to um, see. Where is it? Uh, I just can't see it. Uh, just look through it. Diamond Dallas Page, he's a good one. 
Uh, but there's several uh, weird weird names that you wouldn't expect to be in the game that's actually in the game, like Mickey Whipwreck and uh, that. But uh, also NXT is very much uh, being represented in the game. I know a lot of people, including myself, are a bit wondering why the likes of Becky and Charlotte are not in the game. Hopefully there'll be downloadable content or to be added, you know, added after the release. Uh, it's a pain that they're not in the game. I know so a couple of people apparently saw screenshots uh, and they've looked at them really closely. And apparently a few people in the crowd are wearing Charlotte t-shirts. So hopefully that's a, a good sign that she may be uh, downloadable content after the game's release. Uh, but NXT are well represented with likes of Aiden English, there's Baron Corbin, uh, go through the list, there's Colin Cassidy, there is Emma, there's Enzo Amore, there is Finn Balor, there's also Kevin Owens, uh, who else, there's uh, Simon Gotch, there's Sin Cara and Kalisto, uh, Tyler Breeze as well. So there's some decent uh, names from NXT that are actually represented in the video game this year, which is great. So it's a little mixture of the current WWE guys, some WWE legends and Hall of Famers, uh, and obviously NXT people. I would actually like to see, and I would kind of hope that he's available as a manager, the million dollar man Ted DiBiase. Uh, he was... I mean, he was not really influential in Steve Austin's career. Uh, he was more put with Steve Austin. It wasn't like the Million Dollar Man brought Austin in. It wasn't as if, uh, you know, Steve was brought in on Ted's be uh, request. But, you know, the Million Dollar Man was Austin's kind of, I suppose, kind of break in WWE. You know, Ted has always been a great talker. He's always been a great, uh, you know, a great character in WWE. Uh, so it's a real pain that he isn't actually playable in the game. I'm hoping that he'd be a manager in the game. Um, because Austin came in as the ringmaster to, into WWE. And I know, it, as Austin said, it wasn't the greatest gimmick. It wasn't the greatest time in his career. And it didn't work as well, I don't think, as WWE would have liked to have, to have done. But still, you know, Ted be Austin, a million dollar man, who's actually a lot more successful as a manager than some people realise. Managed Andre the Giant to Andre's only WWE title uh, victory. You know, even though the all whole uh, you know, the whole controversy over uh, you know him taking the title from Hogan, Andre is still. If you look at the record books of WWE, Andre is still recognised as a former WWE heavyweight champion. So uh, you know it counts, and then. Uh, he managed the Steiner brothers to tag team gold and obviously the money ink in WWE and he still maintains a relationship uh, with some of those guys like Tonka uh, uh, who uh, who actually managed a couple of years ago uh, here in Scotland that was held for like 9 in 2012 he managed uh, to Tonka uh, I think he actually managed to Tonka um, 2011 and 2012 I think Tonka helped Ted, uh, Hell for Laker 8 at the end uh, in the main event as well, which led to the Hell for Laker 9 event. So, uh, you know, Ted still keeps in, cup, uh, in touch when he can with some of those guys that he managed. Uh, so, I would love to see Ted as a playable, as a, as a manager at least. Uh, obviously, not going to be a playable character in the game. I would like to see him, uh, although there's obviously there's room for possibly him in the DLC. Uh, I would like to see Ted to be able to use it as a manager, but um, I'm not sure that'll be... Uh, they haven't released any information about any play any managers uh, that'll be in the game like they did last year about Psycho Sid, who never appeared on the PlayStation 4 version, uh, at least the one I have, never appeared on it, although he was promised. And uh, they, they have Sherry and Elizabeth. Uh, there's, I think there's a couple of um, managers anyway in this WWE 2K15 video game. Uh, so I would perhaps like to see Ted uh, as a manager in the WWE 2K16 game. Uh, hope, I'm hoping that, that that will be the case because I would genuinely like to see him uh, as a manager and involved in the game somehow. I mean, like I said, it was very brief, only a few months that, Ted, uh, that, that Steve Austin was managed by the Million Dollar Man and made the Million Dollar Champion, but it was at least his big break. Like Austin said, and Austin said it um, 
I think you said on the Edge and Christian podcast, we keep saying it, you know, it was a foot in the door, you know, it was an opportunity, Vince called him and, you know, pitched the, the idea of the ringmaster to him, and so, you know, he said, okay, I'll do it, uh, because, like you said, in his mind, it was an opportunity in WWE, he was going to take that, get his foot in the door, and at least have the opportunity, have that possibility of showing WWE what you can do and obviously the rest is history and I'm sure well to be honest I say the rest is history the rest is what we'll play in WWE 2K16 well, looks like we'll play the whole gamut of Steve Austin from uh, WCW which is a great thing because the, like I said I was going to say the Steve Austin, stunning Steve Austin screenshot I saw looked like he was coming out on a WCW event so hopefully perhaps we'll see uh, we'll see a WCW and w, uh, WCW and ECW ring in the video game. I'm not entirely sure whether that's happened before. I can't quite remember, but um, it looks certainly like to me um, one of the Clash of Champions. I think it was um, entrances that he was in front. You couldn't see the banner. You could see a bit of purple kind of card being held up by metal girders and it looked to me like an old uh, WCW set they used to have with uh, kind of like tent they used to have sometimes um, events where they had like kind of girder and a, a purple and yellow WCW uh, logo as the entranceway and behind it it was covered like the whole like so see the entranceway is my head all of that kind of area all over there that to the sides of me is all kind of yellow tinsel almost like you would put on a Christmas tree, that looked like what uh, it, what it was in the screenshot. So, ho I'm hope I'm really hoping that that means we'll get a WCW ring in the video game, and I know obviously there's create a ring in the video game as well, and I'm sure many people will create the local wrestling promotion, as they always do, uh, they'll create the Bullet Club uh, ring, they'll create uh, ones for various um, professional movies, like I say, Ricochet or a five-star wrestling one or whatever. You know, I don't know exactly what, how you'll be able to import things uh, into the game, but there's always people who are more, more technically proficient than myself uh, who are able to somehow either free draw it using the controls or, or just very artistic and in creating, uh, you know, creating the rings and creating the designs of the rings so it can be. A, a Mexican wrestler, a Japanese wrestler, or a local wrestler, or their local wrestling promotion. I've done that before. Made an SWE ring. Um, maybe make a depending on you know, how you can import. Because uh, the, the PlayStation 4 doesn't take any photos and that like the PlayStation 3 does. Uh, you know, depending on how you can import things. Uh, you know, uh, I know W2K15. You could you you could upload it on your by your by your computer, then download it to your PlayStation 4, which I would assume is possibly the way they'll do it on the W2K16 video game. So I go on here, go on the particular website, um, you know, upload the JPEG, the image, and then download it onto my PS4 from that website online, or you know through the. the you know, the online bit on the PlayStation uh, on the video game you, you go select the online um, option in WWE 2K16 and you download it onto your PlayStation uh, for WWE 2K16 files saved uh, save the image there and then use it on create a ring or create a superstar or whatever it is because uh, it does look very customizable so um, it's going to be great hopefully we'll get a WCW and an ECW ring in the video game I'd really like that to be the case but definitely look the background that I saw through the stunning one of the stunning Steve Austin um, screenshots was definitely in my opinion a WCW uh, entranceway so hopefully we will see a WCW ring available to play out with the Steve Austin uh, gameplay mode so I want to uh, now change it to the present day and the upcoming WWE Night of Champions uh, pay-per-view. Now, one thing I did notice yesterday when I was looking at the, getting the uh, screenshot of all the matches from Wikipedia, that this is the first Night of Champions to be held in Houston, Texas since 2007. Now, of course, 2007 
that was the same weekend, because I think it was Ju June, July, that was the same weekend, obviously, that the Benoit tragedy happened. He was supposed to be facing uh, John Morrison, uh, I think it was, for the ECW, the vacant, the end vacant ECW championship. Uh, obviously, no show, we all know what happened there. So, this is the first time Night of Champions has returned to Houston, Texas, since 2007. Hopefully, we won't get anybody no-showing this event uh, for any kind of similar reasons. So, there are currently eight... I took this eight, uh, yesterday. It should, I don't think, looking at the SmackDown results, I don't think there should be any changes to this. So, I'll cover the matches that have been announced uh, on this. And I'll take the final two matches all together. The... Uh, Pre-show, the kickoff show will feature Neville and the Lucha Dragons, Kalisto and Sin Cara, versus the Comic Wasteland, Stardust and the Ascension, who are obviously Connor and Victor. Very much a WWE going for the superhero uh, angle on this one. Stardust, the evil kind of villain. The Ascension, his henchmen, and certainly they're very much playing up Neville uh, to be the superhero, the you know, the the, the babyface who saved the day, the Superman, the Batman kind of, well, more obviously Superman with the uh, Altitude era and the man that gravity forgot, the, you know, the whole flying deal. Uh, it's certainly they're very much aiming it towards kids. This angle, they're certainly aiming at very much comic book uh, thing after, after uh, the, the Green Arrow, uh, Stephen Amell took part in SummerSlam it's a continuation of that and I think Lucha Dragons have been obviously cast as the masked guys into the kind of friends of the superhero like He-Man and his friends and uh, you know, obviously, the, he, obviously the superhero uh, even in WWE needs backup sometimes so because uh, you know, three against one, it would be maybe a bit too easy for uh, Stardust and the Ascension. Plus, it would look a bit stupid uh, if Neville was to take on all three and defeat them very easily. It wouldn't make sense. It would really damage the Stardust and Ascension characters. So, almost very much child-oriented in uh, this one. I'm actually going to take do, do predictions on this. I never really keep it up to date on how, how these predictions go. I think I got most of the SummerSlam ones right. I think it was the last time I did uh, uh, predictions on the Neil Malone Wrestling and Life podcast. But again, Podomatic.com and iTunes. Um, I'm going to pick actually the Comic Wasteland, Stardust and the Ascension, Connor and Victor to take the victory in this one. Uh, mostly because I think that that will further the feud. I think that will keep it going. I'd actually like to see these guys continue the feud. It's quite a new feud. I think they're wanting to put some time and effort into it. So I would say the Comic Wasteland, Stardust and the Ascension, Connor and Victor to take the victory in that match. Uh, obviously to put the superhero down, kind of put the superhero down back on the back foot to kind of you know, have the baby face, the good guy, really up against it in order to make a big comeback and uh, you know, possibly win a match. I mean... We're obviously going into there's Hell in the Cell next month in October, and then uh, Survivor Series. It's very difficult to judge these things these days because normally you would say, okay, this will set up for Survivor Series, but you never know what they're going to do for Hell in the Cell. Dean, uh, the first matches that uh, are, are it's very difficult to pick where to start on these uh, main event matches. I'll pick. I'll actually go from the Nikki Bella versus Charlotte match. Now, watching Raw this week, obviously we saw Charlotte challenge Nikki Bella for the Divas Championship. Now, I would have actually, I've got like a few thoughts on this match. Firstly, I would have liked to have seen it, even if they had to kind of screw around with the timings, I would have actually liked to have seen the clock, the Bellatron countdown thing, whatever they, want to, whatever they were calling it, I would have liked to see that come so much closer to breaking, to Nikki's breaking AJ Lee's record. I would have liked to have seen the clock come so, so close to being expired 
when Charlotte defeated Nikki Bella. Now, obviously, I was, the decision was reversed, and I'll talk about that in a second, but they were kind of down to midnight. I would have liked to have seen that, that clock actually have, like, maybe seconds, or even, like, a minute 33, something really, really close. Perhaps it actually would be better, maybe a couple of minutes left on that countdown. When Charlotte suppo- apparently beat Nikki for the title, I would have liked to have seen that countdown clock perhaps be closer to finishing than it was. Therefore, you ha- would have to maybe continue the clock. Uh, you know, when you know, I know the way that they did it was to have Charlotte pin Brie Bell after. Uh, the Bellas did twin magic. Uh, well, Charlotte pinned Brie. Then Stephanie McMahon came out and said, well, actually, hang on. Brie's not involved in the match. Brie's not the champion. You ha- you, you, I'll award you the, the match, but you know, not the championship. Uh, and Charlotte, you'll get your match at Night of Champions. I would have liked to have possibly seen um, you know, Charlotte be so close, very like literally maybe a minute or two minutes away. Uh, the, the clock really close to the well. Anyway, the clock really close to counting down. So Nikki is so so close to breaking Nikki's uh, to breaking AJ Lee's record, so that when Charlotte pinned Brie, Stephanie McMahon would have made the match continue. And only then, with seconds left, did perhaps Nikki defeat Charlotte or take the count out or get herself intentionally disqualified or something. I would have possibly seen the match, had the match continue. Um, and then Nikki Bell do whatever she was to just survive and just break uh, AJ Lee's record. Because I thought it was a bit of an anti-climax that we didn't see the record being broken. We didn't actually see that moment when Nikki Bella broke AJ Lee's record. I would have actually liked to see that happen. I would have liked to see the countdown clock go five, four, three, two, one, zero. Bang! Nikki Bella has broken AJ Lee's record. Instead, we were left to just automatically assume the record's broken. Whatever time it was, local time at midnight, the fans would have just gone, looked at their watches, and thought. Okay, okay, that's midnight. Okay, Nikki Bella has broken AJ Lee's record. We were left just, you know, they made the whole thing about this for the last about, I don't know, 295 days. Uh, she'd held it. They'd made a big thing about, uh, or at least a lot about the last 100 days, at least the last few months of Nikki. Is she going to break AJ Lee's record? Is she going to break it? Is she going to break it? Can she hold on to the title? Can she, you know, break this AJ Lee record? And a lot of people like myself assumed that it was possible because of, uh, you know, the CM Punk, AJ Lee get married and the, the, the fallouts with WWE uh, and so forth. It's, you know, we all thought it was a distinct possibility. But in the end, the countdown clock was a letdown. We did not actually see Nikki Bella lose, uh, well, Nikki Bella uh, take AJ Lee's record. We were left to assume and I know the commentators, Michael Cole and JBL and uh, there was Brian Saxton uh, I don't even think it was JBL actually this week, I think he was climbing that summit thing but we were left by the commentators just saying wow, my god, Nikki Bella has broken AJ Lee's record. We didn't see it. All that build up, and we didn't see the record actually being broken. I would have liked to have seen them time it better. He would pronounce that Nikki Bell, you know, I, do, I don't know where exactly the midnight timing comes in. I don't know how exactly they timed out because it wasn't midnight that AJ Lee won the title. It was due, surely due to a WWE show that she the, she won the title. So it was well before midnight. So I would have liked to have seen them come out and say, the timing is this. A, no, Nikki Bella will break the AJ Lee's record during Monday Night Raw. I would have liked to see that personally. I think it's a bit of a letdown and a bit of annoyance. All these months of build up to will Nikki beat AJ Lee's record for us not to see it, for us not to 
actually have that moment where, you know, it doesn't matter whether, it, you know, even I've thought the match earlier on in the night, and then he, and Nikki Bella comes out later on in this segment, and she just stands there as the countdown clock goes down, you know, at least give us something that we could see the countdown happen. That we could see the moment where Nikki Bella uh, breaks the record. Instead, it was left to her imagination. And I know, like I said, the commentators did say, oh, that, that means Nikki breaks the record. But all that countdown, all that use of the Bellatron clock, the Bellatron countdown, and we don't see, I just thought that was a completely missed opportunity from WWE. Uh, Charlotte will get her rematch this coming Sunday at Night of Champions. Uh, if Bella gets counted out, uh, a brief. If Nikki Bella gets counted out or disqualified, she will lose the title. I could see now that Nikki Bella has actually broken AJ Lee's record. I think we'll see Charlotte hopefully take the uh, the the title this coming Sunday. I know when she and I know she she knew that it was coming. She obviously knew that uh, Stephanie McMahon was coming out to reverse her decision, but it was obvious. You watch it back, those were real tears. Charlotte was genuinely crying at the point where Stephanie McMahon took back the 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 title, the Divas title. You know, uh, you know, look on, you watch Raw again, flick through it if you've got it recorded on your satellite cable box, whatever. Look back on it. Charlotte was genuinely crying. She was genuinely upset that she hadn't actually taken the Divas Championship. She wasn't being allowed to keep it. Uh, and also is not recognised as Divas Champion. So she was genuinely great and I could feel for her. I don't know how how Rick felt. I haven't listened to uh, the, the Woo Nation podcast yet. I have a few podcasts behind. Um, so I won't get to listen to it to, till to later on. Because uh, there's, other st- there's a few programmes I want to watch first. Uh, but certainly she was genuinely upset that she didn't win the Divas Championship. Hopefully this Sunday she will get her win. So I'm picking Charlotte to take the victory. Like I said, such a missed opportunity. Ryback versus Kevin Owens for the Intercontinental Championship. This is a bit of a nothing match. I'm going to go Kevin Owens on this. I think Ryback's done okay as champion. He's, he's big and strong. That's what WWE likes. But I think Kevin Owens could make a huge statement and take a huge step forward in his WWE career if he takes the title from Ryback. And I think this whole Divas revolution, it kind of needs to be backed up by a guy, a male revolution, like of Kevin Owens and Finn Balor and those kind of guys coming into WWE main roster now. I mean, we've seen it with Seth Rollins a little bit, I'll talk about it a little bit later, but I would like to see Kevin Owens take the Intercontinental Championship. I think Kevin Owens deserves it, I think. It will annoy fans. Uh, I know some people like myself will be happy that he takes it, but I would like to see Kevin Owens take the Intercontinental Championship from Ryback. Uh, you know, and obviously, WWE wanted to avoid another vacant championship when Ryback went down with a staff infection in his knee. But I think the timing is right for Kevin Owens to take the Intercontinental Championship. A really, really, uh, you know. A, a title that means a lot, it means a hell of a lot, at least it used to, and I think that's something that Kevin Owens needed to press. Take the title on Sunday and then really press the uh, the fact that the Intercontinental Championship used to mean a hell of a lot, it used to mean a lot of things. We, it's been a couple of years since we saw that happen, uh, Cody Rhodes did it at one point, uh, and it, it really has fallen for grace a little bit, so I'd like to see Kevin Owens really take that and you know talk about how when he watched WWE as a young child, the Intercontinental Champion was second only to the WWE title, and how you know how important this championship is, and how prestigious it is, and how him holding it makes it prestigious once again, and you know really press for that title, and then Kevin Owens is the guy to carry it. The New Day, Kofi Kingston, Biggie, and Xavier and or Xavier Woods against the Dudley Boys. I'm kind of torn in bet- uh, uh, this match between the Dudleys and the New Day as for the Tag Team Championships. I would actually like to perhaps, you know, I'm going to go New Day for this. Um, I think this first match, I think it's, use the numbers game uh, like the New Day have. Uh, I, I would say the New Day to pick up their victory. Use the numbers against the Dudley Boys. Three against two. 
Dudley and Moyes, maybe bring, I don't know, Spike Dudley in for one shot where he can help them win the tag titles uh, at Survivor Series or even Hell in a Cell or something. But I see build this feud up, really build it up that the Dudley Boys absolutely want their 10th WWE Tag Team Championship. They're 24 time Tag Team Champions, I think, in total. This would be 25th, but obviously suddenly it's down to only WWE Tag Team Championships. Really press it in that the Dudley Boys really, really want this championship. They really want this championship reign to, to you know, they really want to capture these titles. They really want to become the ten the ten time WWE tag team champions. Really press it. Deny them a couple of times, then they can go and they can get the title. Build it up so the fans can really get behind the Dudley Boys. So the Dudley Boys are ripped off by the New Day uh, and by perhaps another team as well in their quest to get the titles. Have them fight for it. Not just come in as the Dudley Boys. Do you know who we are? We all know who they are. Uh, have them fight for it. And have them really struggle to get that Ted title. Don't just give them it because they're the Dudley Boys. And I, I'm saying that with, I really like the Dudley Boys, I'm a huge fan of them. I think they're both great. Uh, they really have been sterling work over the years in the tag team division, but make them work for it. So I'm going for the New Day, Kofi Kingston, Biggie, and or Xavier Woods for that, uh, that match. Dolph Ziggler versus Rusev. This match has obviously suffered due to Lana's injuries. It was rumoured it was going to be a mixed tag team match, which I, th I think would have been good to see. Uh, you know, lay the match out. In this kind of situation, I'm not really uh, against laying a match out. At least, you know, knowing what points the guys are going to come in and wrestle and knowing what parts the women are going to come in to wrestle. Uh, because obviously, you know, you don't get mixed, uh, you don't get inter intergender wrestling in WWE. Uh, so I see it difficult for this feud to continue because uh, Lana's going to be out for several months. And without Lana, uh, I, I, we don't know how long she's going to be off television. She's going to be off television, at least I think for, she should be off television for a good few weeks to let her, uh, her wrist begin healing because she's had surgery on it. Um, so I, I see it difficult for this feud to continue. I think possibly Dolph Ziggler to take the victory in this one to try and keep the feud going and then perhaps Summer Rae to get involved and maybe uh, lures Ziggler in and Rusev take him down and knock him out so it kind of carries on, you know, so Rusev gets his heat back as they say and I, I see it difficult, I'm going to go with Dolph Ziggler to, I think, uh, you know trying Dolph, you know, Dolph to fight Lana's corner on this one Dean Ambrose, Roman Reigns and a th mystery partner against the Wyatt family, Bray Wyatt, Luke Harper and Braun Strowman. The mystery partner I think might uh, end up be being Eric Rowan. Uh, Rowan's been out with an injury, I'm not sure what his medical status is. I think he could very much possibly be um, coming back. I think he could be, I think they could play the card of Eric Rowan being kind of abandoned by the Wyatt family. Uh, I think that they could play the card that you know they brought in Braun Strowman to replace Eric Rowan. You know, as soon as he's injured, he's forgotten about. It. Obviously, the, the Wyatts have split a couple of times. We saw Luke Harper rejoin the Wyatt family when Eric Rowan got injured. They had, it's a it's a real pity because they were a good tag team. They saw a couple of their matches, and I thought they were working well together. Um, I would say it's pos quite possible that Eric Rowan is the mystery partner, um, depending on his medical status. You know, uh, you know, Eric Rowan be on his own. The original sheep, you know, you got the white sheep mask versus the black sheep mask of Braun Strowman. I uh, you know that could be a good singles match. You know, um, I know I I'm not entirely sure how, what Braun Strowman could really do right at this point. We haven't seen a lot of him. He's obviously been booked impressively. That you know he's been uh, taken out, Road Dean Ambrose. But you know, I think we could see Eric Rowan return and take on the Wyatt family. You know, you abandoned me. Or, you know, I thought I was part of the family. Obviously not. You forgot about me. I'm not heard from you. You know, I was really abandoned by you. And I thought you know you were sending us out to you know you would go take it back to the so-called freeing of Luke Harper and Eric Rowan, you know, when I, I think WWE Creative did know what to do with them, 
so they were kind of, okay, we'll have Bray Wyatt release Luke Harper and Eric Rowan. Uh, we saw last year, I think it was, um, Bray Wyatt released Harper and Rowan to walk their own path. Uh, I think it could go back to that, so we could see, you know, Eric Rowan really saying, you know, you released me, I thought you would be there to guide me, I thought you would be still there to, so I could ask your advice. You weren't, you didn't contact me, you know, I, I, I don't know, have some kind of thing, you have mad, simply, you abandoned me, you really didn't offer me guidance at all. So is there any, some kind of abandonment storyline, some kind of, you know, abandon and replace storyline with Brad Stover. You, you, you abandoned me, you replaced me, uh, and I'm not happy about it. The last two matches I'll cover um, in a one, in a, in a single kind of altogether package. Seth Rollins versus John Cena for the United States Championship and Seth Rollins versus Sting. Um, well, firstly, I think Obviously, the Seth Rollins George Cena match. Uh, that match is really there, I think, to carry the weight of the show, really to carry the weight of the main event. Uh, it's, uh, we don't know how they'll play it out. Whether Rollins will have to take on Cena and then Sting, or whether he'll face Cena in the opening match and then Sting in the main event. I wouldn't say that would be the way to go forward. I think it would be immediate double duty for uh, for Seth Rollins cause, uh, in the main event. Um, because I think, as much as uh, I am a fan of Sting, uh, as much of a fan of him as I am, uh, I just don't think that a Sting versus Seth Rollins match would really, to be able to carry Knight of Champions completely, I just don't think it would be a, a really good main event, and I, like I said, I, I hate saying that, because I'm such a huge fan of Sting, and um, really want Sting to do well, and I want, kind of want Sting to win, but I think the way they're going to set it up is Cena Rollins to be the actual match, and then the Sting match to kind of be a kind of back up and afterthought maybe in the match. It depends on how they do it. I mean, you could play it several ways. Like you said, Rollins versus Cena early on the card, then the main event against Sting. They could have Sting in the early match against Seth Rollins and then against Cena in the main event. They could have Seth Rollins and a really... Which I think will be a good match. I think... Um, Cena versus Rollins will be good. I think it'll be a good match. They club that match, and then immediately Sting comes down and says, "I want my title match right now." And then the ring bell and they go. Uh, I really, you know, uh, you know, and Seth obviously Rollins beaten down from his match against Cena, whether he wins or loses. And I think Cena's probably going to win. I'm going to pick Cena for the United States match, uh, United States Championship match, um, and I think. Whether win or victory or loss, Rollins beat down by Cena, really on the edge of as much punishment as he could take, will then take on Sting. And Sting, that way, Sting cannot need to do really a huge deal of the match. Uh, Rollins could, you know, sell and sell and sell for Sting and. So that we all, you know, so that Rollins could be on the back foot throughout the match, and really Sting could lay those chops and those kicks and those clotheslines, and not have to do a huge deal. So Rollins could be already beaten down, still fighting back, as the champion should be. But you know, Rollins r very much selling for Sting, very much making that look. Oh, I know, I'm. You know, I'm beat up by Cena, and now I'm in this match as well, and oh my god, you know, this is horrible, and uh, I'm going through hell right at this time, so that's one of the things I could see happening, uh, is those two matches happening one after another, uh, so that uh, Sting take advantage of Rollins, supposedly taking advantage of Rollins' condition, uh, taking advantage of the punishment that Cena laid out to him, and so, you know, 
you know, Sting wants the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, takes Rollins on right after he takes on Cena, um, you know, and really use that as the kind of how to use the match correctly, how to put that match across to the fans, because, like I said, Sting, uh, uh, 10 years ago, uh, uh, 15 years ago when he joined TNA, it would have been a fantastic main event. But nowadays, uh, really unfortunate, I don't think that Sting, and I think I said something, I'm, I'm getting a bit of a deja vu recording this, because I think I said the same about his WrestleMania match. Sting, I don't think is capable of having the as good a match as he once used to, so I think they could use the Cena match to cover up this match, and like you said, have Cena punish Rollins for all it's worth. Whatever the win, like I said, whatever way the the one to book it whether Rollins wins or loses the United States title and have Sting come in Rollins sells continue sells on the back foot on the back foot on the back foot fights and fights back fights back and fights back but Sting continued to dominate him I'm really hoping I'm kind of hoping that Sting wins and is, you know, finally wins the WWE World Heavyweight Championship um, and I think I'm still a bit struggling to speak a little bit because they're so dry suddenly in here. But I would, you know, I would really like, as a huge Sting fan, I would like Sting to win the WWE Heavyweight Championship. I'd love to see him as WWE World Heavyweight Champion, even if it's just briefly. I've seen detractors on social media, um, Twitter, Facebook. I've seen people say, you know, it's not, and even in the magazines. It may not be... Uh, I don't think... Uh, to be honest, I think I kind of agree. I don't think having Sting as champion for a really long length of time would be good for the company. Uh, like I said, he can't put in the performances he once used to. And again, I said with the absolute greatest respect and love about Sting, I think him have, him have the championship, at least for a while, would be good. I should. I would hate to see him win the title and then Sheamus cash in and take it up because Sheamus is not currently. I don't think that from the at least of the matches I took yesterday on Wikipedia not booked for the show, which obviously keeps him in reserve and the possibility of him cashing in. I would not like to see Sheamus cash in and then take the title from Sting all in the one night. I think let Sting enjoy his moment. If there's one guy that really should deserve winning the WWE World Heavyweight Championship and able to enjoy that for a little while, it's Sting. Sting deserves the legacy that he will leave in the business, the career that he's already had, and I have no doubt that one day he will be in the WWE Hall of Fame, possibly even next April he may be in the WWE Hall of Fame. But if there's one guy that I think deserves his moment as WWE Champion, it's Sting. Now, whether Sting will actually, and Sting sometimes has been said to be unselfish, and whether he will you know, agree to have Sheamus come down and defeat him for the title, it's a possibility right now. I uh, seriously think it's a possibility that Sheamus might come down, might sit ringside for the entire Sting Rollins match. I don't know. That might be a nice touch. Tease Sheamus. Have him down ringside for the Rollins Sting match. So we don't know whether Sheamus will cash in or not. Um, but certainly, I think Sting deserves to have this. I, that's what, maybe that'd be a good thing. Sheamus tease it. But, you know, uh, like. And I, I know that not a lot of people will be interested, but Scottish Wrestling Entertainment's Hell for Like a 12 event. I think it was the first match that they had, was their fast track match for, with a briefcase in the air. It's become a tradition in SWE over many years of having this type of match where there's a contract online for a championship, whether it be their future division championship or their heavyweight championship. And this year it was for the heavyweight championship. Now, the winner of that match, making a surprise return, was a guy called Hashtag Scumbag Ian Ambrose, a former SWE Heavyweight Champion. Um, now, he 
came out at the end of the main event where LJT, Little Johnny Trouble, won the SWE Heavyweight Championship. And he teased it. They teased it. Ambrose came out. LGT with both his titles in his hands. Face to face they were. Ambrose held that briefcase up right in front of LGT's face. And we all thought for a moment that it, Ian Ambrose was going to cash in right there and then. That we'd get another match at El Falaika. That we'd get to see Ian Ambrose face LJT right there, right then for the SWE Heavyweight Championship. Ian Ambrose stood there for at least a minute or so and they didn't say anything towards each other. They didn't have microphones and weren't promoing against each other. It was really expertly done. And Ian Ambrose is I mean absolutely fantastic promo guy. I have to say that I have to I have to insert this. Ian Ambrose is a great, great promo guy. He's one of I think the best right now at promos uh, uh, one of the best in Scotland, definitely. Some of his promos that he comes out with is absolutely lyrical, like almost like Shakespeare or wrestling, almost kind of thing. And I'm not saying he uses lots of doth and these and doth and everything like that, but the way he puts his promos together in this last two years or so, fantastic promos. Go on SWE Online TV on YouTube, uh, and you'll find some of them there. I think he might have his own YouTube channel, I'm not entirely sure, I can't remember right this time, but... Some of the promos that he's done is absolutely fantastic. Really, couple of, a good couple of minutes and he talks and he re, you, you really get the point of the promo. And the tease that but you know, Ambrose eventually just walked away, walked backstage, and as if to say, nah, not tonight. That's kind of how I like to see it with Sheamus. Go in the ring. Sting, say Sting has won the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Sheamus gets in the ring. Sting with the title in his hand, over his shoulder, whatever. Beaten, face paint peeling, hair all a mess, exhausted, sweaty Sting, standing there, barely able to to, you know, to keep himself upright. And Sheamus go in the ring, face to face with Sting, and really tease that Sheamus is going to cash in, only for Sheamus to withdraw and return to the back and perhaps he could say on Monday Night Raw well I decided I watched Sting as I, when I grew up I decided to let him have his moment I decided because of his legacy because of his great career because of the amount of respect I had for him as a kid I wanted to let him have his moment and then he could make on a whole thing about Sting being an old guy and I watched him as I as when I was a kid, when I was a little boy, but now I'm a grown man. He's aged, and I'm here, and I've got the briefcase. I'm Mr. Money in the Bank, and go off from there, and you have the whole possible Seamus Sting feud if you don't want to put Seth Rollins right back into the mix for the title, or even have possibly Seth Rollins annoyed at losing both titles if he does uh, on Monday Night Raw, and have him, Seth Rollins go down whatever path he want, and they want him to go down. Uh, even have him want a rematch against Sting and Sheamus right in there, kind of maybe make it a triple threat match again, so you could carry the champion Sting kind of in the in the vet, so Sting could go uh, what they call take a powder a couple of times. Uh, you know, Sting could go outside of the middle, outside of the ring a few times, while Sheamus and Seth Rollins carry the match, um, you know, carry the punishment aspect of the match, depending on how long you want Sting to be the champion, obviously. Uh, you know, possibly drop it at Hell in a Cell. Uh, so certainly there's a, a wide, wide variety of options and possibilities that you could actually have for Knight of Champions and for Sting and Seth Rollins and John C. There's certainly a great deal of stuff you can do in that entire situation. There's just a few suggestions off the top of my head what you can do. Uh, and there's several other... I'm sure other people may have thought of other paths for them to go down. There may be other possibilities for WWE to go down uh, overall. So it's just a few possibilities. Um, like I said though, I don't know exactly how I will be watching Night of Champions um, because I will be in Edinburgh uh, for the Five Star Wrestling Regenesis event. Uh, this is uh, from, I believe they're called Serious Parody. Uh, they made 
they're the makers of the Five Star Wrestling game, which is available on the PlayStation 3 network. Uh, they're having a, a really packed event in Edinburgh this coming Sunday, uh, which is September the 20th. Uh, you know, there are some great, great talents on that show, and some fantastic matches that are being made. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, uh, just selected the wrong section. The I've announced names like Ricochet, uh, Grado, Joe Coffey, ODB, Viper, PJ Black, formerly Justin Gabriel, John Morrison, Carlito, uh, the villain Marty Scurll, amongst others, will be a part of this event at the Meadowbank Sports Centre. There's an event page, Five Star Wrestling. Regenesis you can check out on Facebook. Uh, you know you can get the links to get tickets. So it's through Ticketmaster. Um, I'm really looking forward to this. It should be a great, great match. Uh, they have first match is going to be a battle royal. It's a five star open invitation battle royal. Now this will have uh, people contenders from various uh, wrestling companies across the UK. Uh, take part. They've asked, uh, well, invited uh, many promotions to send two representatives uh, to take part in this battle royal. And the winner, um, it's, uh, the winning brand is going to be featured in the Five Star Wrestling Regenesis video game. So this is also going to be kind of a launch event. Um, for that new Five Star Wrestling Regenesis video game, uh, which is obviously the Five Star Wrestling sequel, I, 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 uh, well, obviously it looks. Um, I haven't actually had the chance to uh, really play Five Star Wrestling. It's been much lauded as a video game. A lot of people say it's really, really good. Um, my brother's girlfriend was actually the winner at the Discovery Wrestling event. Uh, she won a PlayStation 3 and a code to download the video game for free. Uh, and I haven't, I haven't had a chance to play it because the last time we were at a Discovery Wrestling event where Five Star were promoting the game, uh, they were doing a tournament uh, to uh, they were doing like a, a tournament thing at the, at the Discovery Wrestling event. Um, unfortunately, we were a little bit delayed, so we didn't get the the chance to play the game before the tournament began. Um, hopefully, when we get a chance to play it at uh, the show. Uh, I, I don't know whether whether uh, anybody will get the the opportunity to to, to play five star wrestling uh, at the, at the show, but it's definitely going to be a meet and greet with the guy with the stars like Marty Scurll uh, and Ricochet and John Morrison. I think it believe uh, begins about one o'clock at the Meadowbank Sports Centre. Uh, the five star open invitational battle royal so far entrant is uh, two guys from Wrestle Zone, which is the Aberdeen Bowl space. Promotion, one name we know is Scotty Swift, we don't know the other. For Discovery Wrestling, it's former tag team partners, Christopher Saint and Dave Conrad, although Christopher Saint, the Discovery Wrestling Y Division number one contender, he's the number one contender to Chris Saban's Y Division Championship, has said that he is in it for himself, not Discovery Wrestling. From Reckless Intent, Delson Dare, who I understand I know in SWE as Venom. I believe she's under, undergone a bit of a name change recently. Uh, we don't know the Reckless Intent's other uh, participant yet. From PBW, it's Kid Fight and Davy Blaze. We saw those two men team up uh, together at the last Discovery Wrestling event, uh, and they. Uh, they had a really good uh, showing there uh, against the Wild Lions, Tenacious Johnny Wild Lions and Andy Wild. Uh, you know, for a quickly put together tag team, um, I can't remember how this Kid Fight was supposed to be another tag team partner, uh, but due to circumstances, I think he was injured. I can't remember quite who it was now, um, but uh, Davy Blaze stepped in to be Kid Fight's tag team partner and that actually worked really, really well together. And I know they probably have a little bit of a history together, but for a, a real last-minute uh, partnership, they really did a great job. It was a really good tag team match. For PWE, it's TG Rage and Flex Hunter. Now, I hadn't actually uh, really heard of Flex Hunter. I'd heard the name before. Don't really know the guy. He looks kind of Lance Hoyt, big, tall, 
bearded guy who looks like six foot plus. Um, from what I heard, he's a decent talent. Um, very much Lance Hoyt kind of looking guy, but like almost test from WWE uh, looking guy. So that's some of the guys, and also Southside and Target Wrestling have apparently also announced that they'll be sending entrants, and I believe another couple of companies are also sending representatives uh, into that battle royal. Can't see Scottish Wrestling Entertainment sending anybody um, due to various reasons, but, um, and I don't think that ICW will be either, because ICW have got a show on Sunday in Glasgow, but I'm definitely going to the, one, the show in Edinburgh, looking forward to the meet and greet, so um, we'll see some of the guys, I mean the matches, and the people involved in the show, it's going to be a really, really good show, and I'm really genuinely looking forward to, to what should hopefully be one of the events of the year, uh, generally, I mean, listen to these matches, the dare will, PJ Black, formerly Justin Gabriel in WWE, he will be against the villain, Marty Scurll. Grado, the Scottish sensation, will be going against Carlito, another former WWE United States champion. That is going to be a great match. Uh, ODB, in a dream match, and I said this before on the podcast, we said it before on YouTube, generally, with, uh, you know, with the group of regular Scottish uh, local wrestling fans, we sometimes travel as a group together to uh, like shows like Discovery Wrestling and attend Scottish Wrestling Entertainment events and that, and it's a, it's a, uh, also a few times the ICW events here in Dundee. Sometimes we have discussed dream matches about, oh, okay, you know, we take like Viper or Damon O'Connor and Joe Coffey, and we say, who would we want to see it. The whole worldwide wrestling and fantasy wrestling, if it's possible, who would we like to see people face? And for Damon O'Connor, and he's got matches coming up with this guy, Shinzuki Nakamura. It's not in this event, unfortunately, but uh, it's in October in England. Uh, you know, Damon's going to face Shinzuki Nakamura. But one of the, the matches we've always said uh, for the female, uh, for the Scottish star Viper, we've always said over the last couple of years, the fantasy match for Viper is ODB. We wanted to see Viper test her skills against ODB, and that match will finally happen this Sunday at Five Star Wrestling at the uh, Meadowbank Sports Centre in Edinburgh. It's generally a match we've always picked over these last couple of years. ODB the dream opponent for Viper, and it's going to finally happen, we're going to see it, should be an excellent, excellent match. Also, uh, two brilliant matches, I'm, you know, the only like six matches announced so far, and there's going to be possibly a couple of surprise uh, matches, or surprise things at the event, according to Five Star Wrestling, but also there is Magnus versus Joe Coffey, Joe Coffey has become generally one of the top wrestlers in Scotland over the last two years. His brother Mark is so uh, is really talented and I think flying a bit under the radar of some people. Uh, and I haven't had the chance to see, to see them both. Uh, well, to see Mark a lot. I've seen Joe Coffey several times recently at shows like Discovery Wrestling uh, and ICW and Dundee. But that is going to be a great match. I lasso Joe Coffey at the end of July, July 31st, at the last Discovery Wrestling show, take on and defeat Chris Hero, and what was a great match, you can ser- see that online, uh, just search Discovery Wrestling on YouTube, it's a great event, actually, it's the match, uh, and the event is in, in its entirety is uh, uploaded on Discovery Wrestling's uh, YouTube channel, and you've got your, their, all their previous events there as well, to watch for free. Magnus, former TNA world champion, the first genuine world champion that I saw actually compete when, uh, in Glasgow at the TNA shows in January of 2014. Uh, absolutely great talent, tremendous talent, actually um, contributes to the FSM magazine that I was talked that I talked about um, earlier in this video. That's going to be a great match. Joe Coffey will really have a great test against Magnus uh, this coming Sunday. That is going to be a great match. And the one one of the matches that I really think is going to be a potential match of the year candidate. I don't know what whether this is going to be the main event. I don't know what match will be in the main event. Uh, 
totally up to five star wrestling, but certainly one of the matches of the night, and they're all matches of the night possible, is certainly a match. I, I, I would say it's very difficult to say this is the, the match that I'm looking forward to, but certainly, I know, certainly in my top six of the matches that I'm looking forward to, because I'm looking forward to them all, but for the first time, I think, ever in the UK at least, possibly even the first time ever, I know they've battled, technically, in Lucha Underground, but it's Ricochet versus John Morrison. That match is two out of three falls. What a match that is. I know that I think Prince Puma took on John Morrison or John M- Johnny Mundo in the Lucha Underground, but I do not know, and I'm not sure whether they faced each other as Ricochet, uh, but Ricochet versus John Morrison, two out of three falls match. That is going to be a great, great match. I'm genuinely looking forward to seeing that match. That is going to be an exceptional match. Two out of three falls. I have to hope that it goes to the third and final deciding fall. Uh, And I I really do hope in that match, both guys show respect to each other. Because I think if they show... And I know possibly Morrison or possibly even Ricochet might end up taking the shortcut. But I think, at least to start off with, I think both of them should show respect to each other. It's going to be a great... I've seen several episodes of Lucha Underground. Uh, not seen them all, unfortunately. Uh, just not had the chance to sit down and go through YouTube and find them all. Uh, because there's like, something like 37, 38 shows in the series. But, both of them, the episodes I've seen, the feedback I've heard about from the likes of Lucha World's podcast... Uh, with all the various podcasts and the people discussing it on YouTube, they both put on excellent, excellent performance. I, and I've, all, you've heard, I've heard before, Lucha Underground about Rakishi and how about his reputation and how great a performer he is. But to see him live and meet him in the meeting, great, uh, it's going to be great to see Rakishi versus John Morrison for possibly the first time. Uh, I say I don't know. Apart from Prince Puma, who's I suppose keeping it kayfabe as I suppose Ricochet's friend, or uh, at least uh, he knows him, acquaintance I suppose. Uh, they, you know, Prince Puma and Johnny Mundo had great, great matches on Lucha Underground. Uh, each individually, and they're, I think they're, I think they faced each other maybe once. I've seen them one match at least between them. I don't know whether they faced each other again, but that is going to be a great match. I mean. That is a great, great line I'll, re- I'll run that down one more time. The Dear Wolf PJ Black versus the villain Marty Scurll. Grado versus Carlito. ODB versus Viper. Magnus versus Joe Coffey. And Ricochet versus, at least formerly known as John Morrison. I don't know what he calls himself. It says, it says on the, 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 the poster thing, FKA John Morrison obviously means formerly known as John Morrison. I don't know. Um, you know who will win in these matches so I'm not going to make predictions like I did in the Night of Champions um, because I, I just don't want to because I, I think I'm just going to uh, try and sit back I'm also going to take my camera take lots of photos uh, so maybe a little bit of footage um, of the event just, so I could, so I could re- you know, just for a reference for, for when I review it next week because uh, I'll definitely be talking about that event um, next week sometime probably Tuesday or something, depending on um, what time I get back, and I'll definitely, if I take any really good photos, I'll put them up as a photo video, as I did at Help for Lycra, I'll put, pick, I probably will do that, I'll pick my best photos, and put them up as a photo video, so people can see them, uh, it's going to be a great event, really looking forward to it, um, it's yet another trip to Edinburgh, I was really hoping to kind of avoid going on these kind of trips this year, but I've been on more this past year uh, than I thought I would, because Discovery Wrestling had their first show last October, and they've had several shows, so I've been to Edinburgh a few times, there's been obviously SWE shows, and um, you know, there's obviously they're locally here in Dundee, but um, there's Fear and Loathing coming up at the end of November, and then there's Sting coming up, I couldn't miss the opportunity to meet Sting, uh, I just could not turn that down. I mean, uh, I've said it before, you know, I've said it on the podcast before, especially after the likes of what happened to 
Roddy Piper and Dusty Rhodes uh, and Teddy Biosi in his tribute to Roddy Piper uh, that was played at the start of Hell for Lycra. Who knows when um, you know, Ted tells Roddy to, to pull up a chair for him. You never know, because you know, he never knows when he's going to join them up there. So I'd certainly take the opportunity to meet Sting. This is going to be a great, great uh, event in Edinburgh. Um, it's going to be a great weekend of wrestling action. Still to catch up on NXT as well. Uh, next week, so you know, there's a hell of a lot to talk about. Um, depending on what happens in United Champions, I uh, might talk about that. Um, probably talk, definitely talk about the Five Star Wrestling event next week here on YouTube. Uh, like I said, put up that um, that best of photos video. My camera, as I said, I keep saying that, you know, I really want to get a better camera at the end of the year. Uh, I know I really need to get a job as well, which may prevent me from getting to some events, but. Uh, several of the things coming up are already scheduled for next year I want to have a good camera for them so it's going to be a great event really looking forward to it 5 Star Wrestling again. 5 Star Wrestling Regenesis check them out on Facebook they've got a Facebook page uh, the events page and you can get the links to the tickets there uh, Discovery Wrestling are actually helping out on the show in the wrestling portion of the event so I'm looking forward to seeing some of the guys there. Uh, don't know exactly who is going to be in the meet and greet when it comes to the the not the kind of the local the, the UK talent. I'm sure Mark Skull will probably be there, uh, but like Joe Coffey and etc. I'm not sure um, who will actually be at the meet and greet portion uh, when it comes to the UK talent. Uh, but I hope a few of them are there because I really would need, I really do need to get um, some photos with uh, more of the UK talent. Because I've got a few of the SW guys and a couple of people, uh, but the last couple of times I haven't had the opportunity um, to get pictures with um, with some of the UK talent on the Discovery Wrestling shows, and I really want to uh, get photos with them uh, so I can add it to my kind of end of year um, photo video that I want to put up of all the guys I met over the last few years. Uh, last about maybe it's about been about five, six or so years since I really started meeting guys and attending as a regular fan uh, live show so I really wanted Mark to kind of do a kind of a, a video at the end of the year of people who I've met so uh, over these past few years uh, I'll get a lot of footage on that you can find on YouTube channel so it's going to be uh, it's going to, definitely going to be a busy weekend lots of different wrestling shows going on across the UK as well like I've always said, support your 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 independent wrestling show. Uh, support your res decent wrestling companies of their reputable companies. Uh, you know, like Discovery Wrestling and SWE and uh, uh, you know WrestleZone, etc. Uh, you know, support them, give them your custom. You know, as, as, uh, as long as you're obviously you're treated decently, you're not ripped off. Your charges don't go up at the last minute for pictures or autographs or entry prices or something because I've seen a couple of complaints about that at a couple of um, shows and uh, so it's really uh, sporting local and like you know Jeff Jarrett says on the this week on well last week's Art of Wrestling podcast because this week's is actually with Magnus so I'll have to listen to that before Sunday before I meet Magnus uh, you know there really is a, a real I think wrestling is really starting to simmer. I've said it before. Uh, I've said about changes coming in the, uh, uh, you know, before the end of the year, but certainly the whole wrestling world is really starting to simmer. It really is starting to really, really simmer along nicely when it comes to great shows and great events. So it's going to be a busy weekend. Uh, lots to enjoy, lots to catch up on. Thank God for the WWE Network so I can, when I get back, or probably, I, I know I'll probably be back about the time that Night of Champions um, starts, but I'm probably too exhausted to watch it, I'll probably watch it sometime during Monday, um, but it, there's a lot to cut to cover um, this coming weekend, it's going to be a great weekend, whatever happens, it's going to be great, five star wrestling on Sunday Night of Champions, and so much stuff happening, it is generally going to be a very enjoyable uh, into the weekend and it's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait to to attend those, you know, to attend that event, see what goes on, Night of Champions, and see where this leads us going. Really, I mean, this is amazing. This is now the 17th of September. We're really heading towards the end of the year. The last couple of months of 2015 are almost upon us. Uh, we're really into that. We started to get into that final stretch of 2015. 
been a good year so far, and fingers crossed it continues to the, the end of 2015. I've said this before as well, but hopefully uh, the end of 2015 can provide fans with a lot of great wrestling, a lot of great wrestling shows, a lot of great events, a lot of enjoyment for the fans, so that when it comes, when we look back at 2015, the taste in the wrestling fans' mouth is a really good one that we can look back in 2015 and think, wow, that was what I call a good year for professional wrestling.